If you're after a budget phone, the OnePlus Nord CE is hands down one of the best options for a cheap smartphone, pretty much on the market full stop. I bought this one as a replacement for my partner's now aging OnePlus 3T, and I was honestly blown away with what you get for your money here. I mean, to make it clear, this is no flagship killer, but it also doesn't claim to be. And the trade-offs that it makes for that, that price tag, I think are perfectly reasonable. The first and probably most obvious trade-off here is in the specs department. You get a Snapdragon 750G 5G, which, while not the oldest or slowest, isn't exactly top tier either. As the name suggests, it does all support 5G, which is certainly a, a nice benefit to have. Although in raw performance terms, rather uh, confusingly, it is actually faster than the 765 g and the 765, although isn't quite as fast as the 780G, uh, 80G, 5G, uh, the 855, 855+, Plus, and the new 888 Plus 5G. Uh, they're all varying degrees of faster. In terms of RAM and storage, you get two options here. This is the cheaper 8GB RAM, 128GB uh, storage model, although you do have the option to, well, option it up to 12GB of LPDDR4X and 256GB of UFS 2.1 storage, if you'd prefer. For the money though, I think this model, the 8GB model, makes the most sense as the pricing on that higher end 12GB RAM model or option puts it much closer to a number of other options that are arguably a better overall value, including OnePlus's own Nord 2 5G. Now, beyond the 5G supports, you also get up to 802.11ac Wi-Fi, not quite the, the fastest top-end AX or Wi-Fi 6E, but perfectly fine nonetheless. Of course, Bluetooth 5.1, USB-C for charging and data, and yeah, a headphone jack. You actually get a headphone jack here. I know it's it's incredible to, to see in these times, but well, it's actually here. You also get a dual SIM tray, although sadly no micro SD card expansion. Now, if you've ever used or even held a phone, at well, let's call it this sort of price bracket, then you probably know how they feel. They're often covered in sort of cheap plastic, they're just a little too sort of squishy or, or bendy, let's call it subpar build quality. But this though, this feels legitimately premium. Like, this feels like a very well built, very, well, premium phone. It feels good in the hand. It doesn't feel like it, it squishes in the wrong directions. And sure, the back is made of plastic, unlike the glass that you get on, say, my OnePlus 7T Pro, but, well, it doesn't matter. It still feels rather nice and high quality. And sure, the glass that's on the front isn't Corning brand Gorilla Glass, unlike, you know, my 7T Pro, but Again, it doesn't really need to be. Arguably, the uh, glass that's on this probably comes from what I would say is a, a very similar factory. And even if it doesn't, the phone comes with a screen protector pre-applied in the box, along with this rather nice uh, sort of phone case with a little uh, cover over the USB-C port, which, while I actually really like the idea, it's also quite annoying when you actually go to plug it in and charge it. But anyway, point is that beyond perhaps a touch uh, less of shatter resistance if you drop it too often, I can't imagine that being a problem. And for the overall build and feel of this, it's legitimately premium. I am sad to see the alert slider missing from the side of the phone. That's something that the Nord 2 does still retain, but this core edition or CE edition uh, doesn't. But in the grand scheme of things, this is still a very premium feel, and for this kind of price tag, that's really impressive. One other key area that you'll often sacrifice in sort of more budget phones like this is the cameras. And unlike the build quality, sadly this one isn't quite as, well, premium as it perhaps could be. 
You do make a bit of a sacrifice in picking this phone over some other ones, but they still do a serviceable job. And if you're only sharing photos over messaging apps that will compress the pictures anyway to your, your friends and family, I think this is going to be perfectly adequate. If your Insta feed is actually something that's important to you, then maybe this might not quite be for you, but I think for the, the average user anyway, it's plenty fine. On the back, you get three cameras, with the top being a 64 megapixel f1.79 main camera, the middle being an 8 megapixel f2.25 ultrawide with a 119 degree viewing angle, and the bottom being a 2 megapixel f2.4 mono camera, which as far as I'm aware is mostly used for getting things like depth information. You do also have an LED flash, although unlike the uh, slightly fancier one in my 7T Pro, it's not a dual tone, it's a, a single cool LED, but again, it's still plenty bright enough and certainly does the job. The main camera, by default anyway, outputs a 16 megapixel image as it uses four pixels in a square to give better accuracy to the, the, the pixel that it actually finally outputs. Those images look fine, although the sharpening is definitely turned up to the max, and it looks a touch actually pretty desaturated. Taking a look at a wide shot, you can see that while this does look pretty decent and covers or captures a remarkable amount of information and detail, it's also incredibly over sharpened, which leads to some, well, a less pleasurable viewing experience if you like. You can see that in the bush on the left. If we compare to my OnePlus 70 Pro, while that is a much softer overall image, it actually captures less physical detail, it's also a more pleasurable viewing experience and honestly more true to life than the Nord CE, especially thanks to that sort of saturation difference. You can see that here in the, the sh this shot of some berries where the uh, 70 Pro's image is a lot closer to what the real berries actually looked like and what that whole image looked like by comparison. And it's, uh, well, the North Sea one still obviously captures it just fine, it's just not quite as nice. I should also mention that the Nord CE doesn't have a macro mode, so any up-close photography can be pretty hit or miss, and the minimum focus distance seems to be pretty, well, pretty long. And again, on that color balance side, you can see the red berries on the uh, OnePlus 7T Pro's image is actually a lot closer to, like I said, what you, what you see in real life by comparison. This first image is a 16 megapixel one, and the second one is a 64 megapixel one of the, the same shot. I'll let you skip back and forward in the timeline to see uh, if you can tell any differences. Uh, comparing again to my 7T Pro, you can see that sort of saturation and just color accuracy difference. Although if we zoom in, you can see that the Nord CE captures a lot more detail thanks to that insane amount of over sharpening. It's definitely a lot less realistic. You don't get as nice sort of dynamic range as it were, where in the 70 Pro's image, there's some nice dark and shadowy areas like you see in real life, but you can't argue that it does capture a lot of detail. As for the ultrawide, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty terrible. It's hopelessly soft. Perhaps for some maybe up close group photos, it might come out okay. But as you can see in this shot, Everything from the, the leaves in the ground to the trees and even an entire bush is now kind of a, a colored blob rather than nicely defined objects. Compared to my 70 Pro's ultrawide, which is actually a, has a narrower field of view, you can see just how much more detail that shot gets by comparison. Of course, when it comes to zooming in, which I actually tend to use or find myself using more often than the ultrawide, well, having no telephoto camera means that you're stuck zooming in on the main camera's image, which, well, not horrendous, and of course it can do it somewhat intelligently thanks to that 64 megapixel sensor, so it can still zoom in and give you, you know, actual pixels there. It's still not quite as, um, well, impressive, and realistically comparing to a phone with a dedicated telephoto camera like my 7T Pro, well, there's just no contest which of those two images ends up looking better, clearer, crisper, and, well, just generally nicer to look at. When it comes to video, well, 
uh, you do have the option to record at either 4K30 or 1080p30 or even 1080p60 if you prefer, but the 4K video looks really, really bad. Like, if you keep everything perfectly still, including the camera, then sure, it's fine. But if you want to move it around at all, especially holding the camera or holding your phone, then it ends up looking terrible. The stabilization algorithm is dreadful. It ends up giving you an even worse look than if it wasn't stabilized. And even in fairly bright sunlight, it looked like it pinned the shutter angle to 360 degrees, meaning that any level of motion was a smeary, blurry mess. This footage isn't usable, although luckily at 1080p30, the, uh, the quality does improve greatly. Its stabilization algorithm is, is still terrible and gives an arguably more shaky output, but it doesn't look like it wants to smear everything, which is definitely better. I mean, it's clear that the sharpening is still uh, turned up to 11, as whenever you have any level of, sort of stillness, you can see how sharp the image gets, and then as soon as you start moving, the sharpness suddenly goes away as if it's a filter that's being, you know, only put on when the, the footage is still, and so you then get a, a slightly softer look, and then the second that you stay still again, it then resharpens the whole image. That gives a almost an arguably, again, worse look to it, and I wish that it was a lot less aggressive with that sharpening, both as a final effect and just how quickly it turns it on and off. The front-facing camera is a Sony IMX471 sensor with 16 megapixels and an f2.45 aperture, and even electronic image stabilization, which is pretty impressive, especially considering the price. It's certainly not awful, but compared to my 7T Pro, it's not amazing, despite my 7T Pro actually offering the same sensor, although a much wider f2 aperture. Overall, my uh, 7T Pro's version of the same sensor offers much better both clarity and resolution, but also uh, a lot less noise and even a significant improvement in the sort of saturation. The, the Nord CE's camera seems to significantly desaturate pretty much all of its images, or I should say the processing does, uh, compared to my uh, 7C Pro, which seems to be a lot less aggressive in desaturating, or even potentially slightly more aggressive in adding saturation, although the uh, images from my 7C Pro generally are much more true to life than the ones from this Nord CE. When it comes to front-facing video, it can do up to 1080p 30 or 1080p 60. I'm recording at 1080p 30 right now, and as you can see in good lighting, it does a pretty good job. It's still not quite as clear or crisp as my 70 Pros, but it's still good enough. Although in low light performance, as I turn off the lights, uh, it's a little bit, um, well, not quite as good. You do get a lot more uh, sort of noise and grain, although it does do its best to, well, try and filter as much as you can. Although you can see as, you know, with certain colors, you get a, a few little filtering bugs, which can, um, pop up every now and again, but again, it's still not too bad, especially for a, a built-in camera, and also you're hearing the microphone now as well. That front camera is actually a hole punch cam, which is punched through a rather nice display. It's a 6.43 inch, 2400 by 1080, 90 hertz AMOLED display. Yes, this budget phone has a 90 hertz AMOLED in it, which is incredibly smooth and fluid, and on top of the already sort of vibrant and rich colors, perfectly good 410 ppi pixel density, meaning that everything from text to videos is nice and clear and crisp, and even brightness isn't bad. I think you would only struggle in sort of direct sunlight, but even in this room for, for filming, I have no problems seeing this at all, so I'm rather happy with this display for sure. Of course, one of the benefits of an OLED display is that you only need to turn on the pixels that are actually being used, which means that you can get incredibly deep and rich blacks, but also that things like the ambient display work incredibly well. They don't drain your battery while having to, you know, turn on the entire 
display. You can obviously customize how this looks. I personally like this uh, sort of clean text design with just your battery indicator and a couple of logos for your notifications. Uh, but, uh, oh, if you're worried about the 90 hertz refresh rate draining your battery as well, uh, you'll be happy to know that the refresh rate actually drops down to 60 when you weren't using the display or when certain apps, things like YouTube, are open and running. Specifically with YouTube, it seems to be locked at 60 hertz, regardless of if you're watching a video or just scrolling through the menus. Of course, if you're playing some games, then it will generally be sitting at 90 hertz for the most smooth and enjoyable gaming experience possible. And despite its well, relatively mid-tier core and the Adreno 619 GPU, it actually games fairly well. Now, it's clear that games like Asphalt are turning their settings down automatically to give you a, a, a better playing experience. I mean, you can see the lack of anti-aliasing or sort of staircasing on edges quite clearly. But the thing is that as long as you're not a, a PUBG Mobile Pro, this should suffice just fine. I mean, that kind of sums up the whole performance of this device quite well. If you aren't an absolute power user, then you should have no problems with using this. I mean, it's smooth and responsive, it loads everything certainly fast enough, and while I can't speak for how it'll handle in a year or two's time, I have to say that for this, especially for this price point, it's perfectly fine, usable, smooth, responsive, and well, good enough. Now, I've already mentioned the, the battery saving features that it has, but not so much about the battery itself. That is a 4500 milliamp hour cell, which in our experience with it, has easily lasted a full day, even with moderate use. You should be able to see around six hours of screen on time, give or take, or potentially a bit more. Uh, and should you want to top this up, you can use the included, yes, actually included, Warp 30 charger and cable to charge around 70% in about 30 minutes from dead, which is fantastic. Now, sadly, there isn't any wireless charging here, although you do still get NFC, meaning that wireless payments through things like Google Pay work just fine. When it comes to security for those payments, or even just the phone itself, you do have an under-screen fingerprint reader, which actually feels a little bit faster than the one on my 7T Pro, although it's still the, the same sort of kind of convenient position towards the bottom of the device. It works out quite well from my hands, although I wouldn't mind it maybe a, a touch higher if they, if they fancied, but it's still perfectly fine. You can also use your face to unlock it instead, although that's not the most secure uh, as it's just using the camera itself and no extra depth sensors or LiDAR or whatever else. Although I would mention that it is quite nice, you do have a little LED ring around the camera, uh, the front facing camera, and a little activator, active LED next to it. So whenever the front facing camera is in use, it always shows you the animation for it being turned on and a little green LED next to it to show you that it's active and being used by something, whatever that may be. The other thing that the Nord CE is sort of, I guess, missing up at the top is a second speaker. Of course, it has the, the built-in earpiece speaker, but that isn't used when listening to things like music or watching videos. Only the bottom firing speaker is, and while it is still reasonably loud, it's not the best quality. Again, for much of the, the rest of the phone, it's still good enough. If you're just wanting to play some music in the background or listen to a YouTuber talk at you for 20 minutes straight, sorry, uh, then it's perfectly good enough, but it would be nice to see that earpiece speaker beefed up so that it can be used as a, a stereo pair and get a bit better of a, a usage experience and viewing experience out of it, especially considering how beautiful and rather nice the display itself is. There is one other rather key point about the phone that I haven't explicitly mentioned yet, and that's its price tag. Now, originally, when this launched, it was retailed for £300 for this, this base 8GB RAM, 128GB model. And for that kind of money, 
It was in some pretty hot and stiff competition from a number of other brands like Xiaomi or Realme, who's a subsidiary of Oppo, effectively a sister company to OnePlus themselves, of course Samsung, and even OnePlus themselves with the Nord 2. But that's not the price that you can buy this for right now. OnePlus will sell this to you for £250, which is a considerably better value proposition. For comparison, the Poco F3, the lowest price that's ever been, was on the Black Friday sale this year for £269. But the Nord C 5G is now £244 full time, at least on Amazon. And actually, since we're talking about on sale prices, that's when I bought this phone. I bought it on the Black Friday sale on Amazon for just £200. For £200, uh, this is... Well, there just isn't anything on the market that feels this well built, this good of a software experience, and even has two full versions of Android updates on the way, along with three years of security updates. Also, this nice of a display, and what I would call a pretty reasonably balanced things like cameras, battery life, and overall features. This is, for me anyway, the best budget smartphone you can buy right now. If you can't afford a flagship, or maybe you were a parent looking to buy your kid a phone for Christmas, or and you don't want to get them something too, you know, well, expensive or just high-end in general, or just if you want a budget phone, this is an exceptional value, especially if you can get it on that on-sale price tag. And even if you can't, I still think it offers a very well-balanced uh, well, device and a very premium feel, if nothing else, again, for that sort of £250 price tag. And uh, again, it's just really difficult to find anything else that is in that sort of price tag or so significantly better that it's worth spending the hundred plus pounds more to get you know, whatever that other phone is instead. Now, with that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Nord CE 5G? Is it a phone you'd pick up yourself or would you go with some other option instead? If you have any other suggestions, I would love to hear those in the comments down below. Or are you more of a sort of flagship type person and you, you'd rather get you know the, the flagship, probably iPhone or whatever the latest Samsung Galaxy is or Fold, whatever. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Actually, just let me know what phone you're rocking right now. You know me, I'm a 7T Pro, but feel free to let me know. Uh, if you want to pick up one of these Nord CE 5Gs, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. That will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. And I've been talking about UK pricing, but around the world it will definitely change depending on where you are. So feel free to take a look. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And you can also support the channel in a, a load of ways, including just hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell notification icon to be notified of these new videos that come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Or you can check out the YouTube join button for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our weekly live streams. Or you could support on Patreon instead if you prefer. You can also check out hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs and there's a load of other affiliate links in the description if you're buying places like Overclocks UK, you can check that one out. I'll also leave some more videos on the end cards uh, including my 7T Pro review if you're interested in checking that one out. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.